Alrighty, well, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us here tonight at Desert Pines. Um, I wanted to get us started with just a short little video, get everybody pumped up for some good information. All right, so as you can see tonight, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about nutrition for your horses, even for your dogs, and a little bit for yourself. We kind of do just a bit of everything. Uh, so my name is Dr. Darcy Robertson, and I do specialize in sports medicine. Um, I'm actually a human doctor, not a veterinarian, but there's a lot of crossover when it comes to nutrition between what we want for our animals and what we want for ourselves. And so Platinum has definitely taken that on on all venues. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the science behind supplementation and how to make the best decisions possible for you and for your animals. So first let's ask a question. Who do you ask when you have a nutrition question? Anybody here? What, what do you think is your go-to when you think of something that's really on your mind? Who is the first person that you go to? Nutritionist or veterinarian? Nutritionist or, or veterinarian? Nutritionist. Perfect. Google. Google. That's <laughs> You know, Google is actually probably the number one answer that I hear. It would be really awesome if we always had an opportunity to consult with a nutritionist or a veterinarian or our physician whenever we had questions about nutrition. But naturally, that's not usually the case. And so Dr. Google comes in handy because Dr. Google knows everything. And it's great because you can always ask him anything you want, any time of day, and you're gonna get an answer. Might not be the right answer, but you'll get an answer. So the next question is, you ask Dr. Google, well, let's see, um, what should I supplement for joint pain? Glucosamine, that's one of the number one things that comes up. That's great, now I know I need some glucosamine. Well, the next question is, where do I get my glucosamine? I'd say nine times out of 10, we go back to Dr. Google. Where should I buy glucosamine, Dr. Google? And so um, it can be really difficult to know where to start your nutritional journey, even if you know what you need. Knowing where to get it is the next key. And so how do you know who you can trust? Are you gonna trust Dr. Google? Are you gonna trust the thousands of reviews that you see online? You know, you get the star ratings and uh, this product's really bad, this product's really good. But how do you know that those ratings are, are true and that they're educated? Um, why should you listen to the platinum lady? Because obviously I'm talking about platinum, so I'm gonna say platinum's the best. How do you know how to make an informed decision for yourself and for your animals? And so um, basically what I encourage you to do is you need to ask yourself, who can I trust? Number one, obviously your veterinarian is going to be the foremost expert on nutrition for your animal. Other than you, nobody knows that animal like your veterinarian. And so I definitely recommend that you consult your veterinarian when possible. But then when it comes to making a decision about where to buy your products, it is so important that you take into consideration all these different levels of, of issues such as What's the purity of the product? What's its potency? What's its bioavailability? These are questions that you need to be asking when you're buying anything, whether it's platinum or anything else. And so, you know, with purity, it's so important that you have a pure ingredient. 
you want to make sure that exactly what you want is in there and stuff that you don't want isn't in there. Because unfortunately, that's quite often the case. We look out for contamination, and that's really a huge deal for us at Platinum because we have so many Olympic-level athletes and backyard athletes. But we want to make sure that they all get the same level of purity and no toxins, no heavy metals, no contaminants, nothing that would test when we don't want it to test. Potency. Well, you might have a pure product, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's potent. How, how useful is it? How good is it going to be at getting the job done? So the potency, very important. And then bioavailability. What does bioavailability mean? Well, there's a lot of nutrients that you could take orally. You could take as much as you want. But unfortunately, they might be the wrong size of molecule, and that will prevent us from being able to absorb and digest them. Right then and there, you're wasting your money because it's not going to be absorbed. It's not going to do the job. So these are all things that we want to make sure we address. Purity, potency, and bioavailability. So why platinum? Um, I definitely want to talk about nutrition, and I will get there in just a really short minute. But first and foremost, I think it's important for you to know why I chose to work for platinum, because all of those things went through my mind. When I first started practicing, I feel very fortunate because as a sports medicine practitioner, I have patients that come to me because they want to get better. And they want to get better as fast as possible. Believe it or not, that's not the norm in human medicine. Even if we say we want to get well, nine times out of 10, we either don't have the time or the diligence it's going to take to heal ourselves and actually solve the problem. Sometimes it's just not an option. We have to get better. We have to get out of pain so we can get back to work. And that's definitely a real factor that we need to acknowledge. But when it comes to an athlete, when their job is their performance, that makes such a difference because they know that if they don't heal properly, they're not going to be able to compete. Their career is going to be shortened. And so, again, I feel very fortunate that my patients come to me and they want to know, what can I do short of drugs and surgery that's going to get me back on the playing field, that's going to get me able to ride my next bull as soon as possible, as healthy as possible, so I can keep doing that for the rest of my life. So it's great, but myself, not unlike what I hear from a lot of veterinarians, I didn't get an immense educational background of nutrition in school. And it's unfortunate, you know, it's, gosh, I remember there was a couple classes on it, but they didn't really go in depth. And so you have to seek it out. Your veterinarians seek out that knowledge so that they can be well-informed for you. And that's one of the, the greatest gifts is to have a veterinarian that goes out of their way. They know it's important to you, so it's important to them. And so um, I did the same thing. I, I sought it out. I, I tried to find exactly what research I needed to know. And then I ran into this same problem. How do I know what company to buy supplements from? So, in my opinion, the next best thing that you have to uh, doing the research and trying to figure it out all on your own, the best option is to consult somebody you trust. Like I said, your veterinarian. Talk to your vet. In my case, I work with an amazing physician who has over 30 years of experience in sports medicine. So naturally, I went to him and I said, Dr. Kraus, I have patients asking me about nutrition, but you know, this isn't necessarily my forte yet. What do you recommend when it comes to supplementation? And he looked at me and he's like, oh, it's an easy question. It's like, I've been using Platinum Performance for 20 years and I recommend it to all my patients. Wow, well, I thought it was gonna be a little more difficult than that. But I do have to tell you a little bit about Dr. Krauss. Um, he, this April, is gonna be 65 years old. He's been practicing for over 30 years. And last October, he competed in the Kona Ironman World Championships. And so this is Dr. Krauss. He is an avid triathlete, has been competing in triathlons for almost 20 years since he was in his 40s. He does a minimum of two to three Ironmans and half Ironmans a year, competes all the time. This is a, he's an animal. I wish I was that athletic when I was 16. There's no way. He is amazing. And so to me, not only is he a physician who I look up to, he's an athlete himself. And him saying that he relies on these products meant so much to me that I instantly was, was like, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try it for myself, I'm gonna try it for my patients. 
And so short of that experience, you might not have somebody direct that competes in Ironmans that can tell you that platinum is the greatest, but you do have your veterinarians. And so that's the key resource to look to. And especially with vets, when I, when I see them sharing the information with their patients, with their clients, it's so impressive when they say, how do I know platinum works? Because I use it on my own horse and my own dog. Oh, and I take it myself. And so it's pretty awesome to have that story. So I just wanted you to know why I'm here, why I'm standing in front of you talking about platinum, but more importantly, nutrition in general. So that's just a little bit about my background in platinum. Um, what makes our company different on a more scientific level? Um, so we did have some humble beginnings. That was actually, let me go back there. Um, that was the first Alamo Pintado vet clinic um, back in the 70s. I don't know if you've ever heard of a little wine town called Los Olivos, California. It's where they filmed that movie Sideways, right in our backyard. This is actually in the movie Sideways. That was the first clinic, and so that was kind of where platinum was originated. Um, so we had some humble beginnings, and this is now our production facility just north of Santa Barbara, California. Uh, and it's really awesome to see how nutrition has grown in the veterinary practice and become more of a forefront, more of a first thought instead of the last thought. And I see that more in human nutrition where doctors would, would push it off and, and kind of uh, you know, not really give it any credit. And now we have physicians really actively seeking it out, even from us at Platinum. So that's a great thing to hear. Um, regardless of your company, Whatever you choose, whether it's Platinum or another company, really looking at the integrity of the product, like I said, purity, potency, bioavailability. And so just to give you an example of a standard that I think companies should be compared to, at Platinum, we have a whole section of quarantine. And that sounds weird, but it's necessary. We have the highest quality ingredients coming in but we don't take that at face value, and, and no good company will. So we actually test each and every individual ingredient that's brought in to, from a, an individual company. We test it to make sure it meets our purity and potency standards. Then we allow it into the production facility, make our formulas, retest them in-house, and then we also send them out for third-party testing. And so test, test, and retest. I know it sounds excessive, but that is just so important to the quality of the nutrition that you're feeding. Because the, the saddest thing to me would be to see someone who's coming to a nutrition lecture. You want to learn everything you can. You want to find the right answer so that you can help your animal. You can help yourself. You find that product, and the saddest thing to me would be to have a product that's not going to be effective for you. And so we really go the extra mile, as any good company will, to make sure that your quality, uh, the product quality that you get is the highest quality available. I just think this is funny. I'm sorry, I had to add this. Um, so the gentleman in both pictures, that's Mark Herthel, who's the president of Platinum. And I love the fact that he actually, as of earlier this year, is for a first time horse owner. He's had horses his whole life with his parents, but Bernie, the POA pony right there with his daughter Kendall, that's Mark's first horse. So it's been a really neat process to see Mark become a horse owner on the other side of the fence. And we always joke that's Mark's brother Troy. And um, Troy um, graduated from vet school a couple years ago and he's now practicing at Alamo. And we joke that this was the first platinum case study and, and Mark was pre-platinum and Troy was <laughs> after platinum. So. Uh, We've, we've been using Platinum in the Hertel family for a long time, but they're a, a great family to work for, great company, and um, so that's, that's all I'll say about Platinum itself. So now let's talk about nutrition. So nutrition in general, what comes to mind when I say the word nutrition? What do you think of? Food and what's in it. That's excellent, that is, that is a big part of nutrition. Anybody else? A lot of times, this is kind of what we think of when it comes to nutrition for our horse, right? You gotta go to the feed store and you gotta find a bag of something or a bucket of something and, and that's gonna be your horse's nutrition. Well, unfortunately, the nutrition that we find in feed stores is not quite what our horses need on a regular basis. What I want you to think of when it comes to nutrition, you mentioned food and what's in it. 
so much greater than food and what's in it, we want to look at the cellular level. And so does anybody know what this picture is of? Skin. Skin. Well, actually, it could, it could look like the dermis a little bit, an epidermis. Um, to me, it looks like a bunch of Q-tips. But that was um, <laughs> that's the second one. <laughs> but believe it or not, this is actually a really blown up version of a cell membrane. And so when it comes to nutrition, it really affects every single cell. So we need to bring it in and think about nutrition on the cellular level. And so to look at this a little even more closely, those yellow and red little tags that hang off of the Q-tips, those are actually omegas. Those are fatty acid chains. I think most of you have probably heard of omega-3s, and that's kind of a buzzword, and so we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But I think it's important for you to see that each and every cell in our body is surrounded by this layer. It's called a phospholipid bilayer, and that encircles our cell and is the key to our cellular health, which means it's the key to our total health. And so we're going we're gonna to think small for the rest of this evening. We're going to think about the cellular liquid bilayer in the cell wall. And so as you can see, those omegas, omega-6s, the omega-3s, and then those little blue guys, those are actually antioxidants. Those are directly incorporated into each and every cell of our body. And so what your horse eats, if it's high in omega-6s or high in omega-3s, that really is what your horse is, omega-6s and omega-3s. That's what we all are. We're all made up of those cell membranes. So let me ask you, do you think that we're feeding our horses like nature intended? Do you think most horses eat like they would naturally? No? Well, I think that most horses back in the, the time when they were just grazing and, and they weren't quite as domesticated, they really had this unique natural diet that was really diverse. You know, they were eating everything from flowers to all different types of grasses and tree bark, probably getting a little dirt in there as well. And they're just getting this whole variety of nutrition. And that's great. Variety is excellent. I don't know if we get that much anymore. And it's not because we don't want to provide it to them. I know in California, I haven't seen rain where I live in I don't know how long, so grass is not so much an option. Um, not to mention if you have a show horse. Well, you don't really want to turn him out on 300 acres because Lord knows that there's going to be a fence down and he's going to be the one going through it, especially if it's your good show horse. Um, so, you know, we do keep them confined, a lot different grazing opportunities in a stall than out in a pasture. So, again, back to cellular nutrition. This evening, we're really going to look at, like I said, the cellular level. But there's going to be two things that we're going to kind of compare and contrast. And so one is that really positive word that I want you to focus on, and that's omega-3 fatty acids. And I know that you've all heard it before, but we're going to really talk about what is that, what does it mean to you, how does it work for your body and for your horse's body. And then on the flip side of the coin, we're going to discuss the evil word inflammation. And so inflammation truly has so many destructive properties. We want to know what causes it so we can stop it. So again, an omega-3, what is that kind of mysterious buzzword? So an omega-3 is a polyunsaturated essential fatty acid. What does it mean to be essential? So essential um, means that your horse, yourself, you're going to have to take that in from outside sources. Your body is not going to make that product. You have to ingest it. So it's this complex structure that you have to ingest. Where are you going to find it? Well, lucky for horses, it's really plentiful in grass. It's also plentiful in food like flax. Flaxseed is really rich in omega-3 fatty acids. But not everything is high in omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, um, there can be an imbalance. And we discussed that those, that bilayer is made up of both omega-3s and omega-6s. And so when you get out of balance with your omega-3s and your omega-6s, it really causes so many problems. You think it's not a big deal, but little tweaks like that, good or bad, 
have this cascade effect. And so omega-6s, especially in a horse, we do want to be very careful of, and that's the linoleic acid. The omega-6 structure is plentiful in horse feeds. Um, feeds such as corn, barley, oats, all those guys have really high omega-6 counts. Well, the natural grazing diet, as you can see, has quite a few omega-3s. In fact, it's about a 5 to 1 ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s. Well, typical modern horse diet that's high in oats or, or corn or a processed feed base is much different than a horse's natural diet. In fact, it's about 17 omega-6s to every one omega-3. So instead of being five of the good guys and only one of the bad, it's 17 of the bad guys to every one good guy. So that's really flip-flop from where we want to be nutritionally. For people, it's a little bit different since horses are herbivores and people are not necessarily herbivores. We can be. Um, we don't require quite as high a level as omega-3s which makes sense, since naturally we're not out eating grass in the pasture every day. That's not our natural diet. But for horses, omega-3s are really key to health on so many levels. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, again, looking at the comparison, why is it so important that we keep those omega-3s and omega-6s in balance? Well, because omega-3s are directly related to anti-inflammatory processes, where omega-6s are the exact opposite. Well, is inflammation really so bad? I mean, what, do you, what do we think of when, when you think of inflammation? What do you kind of visualize? Trouble. Trouble? Well, yes, it can be trouble. Anyone else visually, like, what do you think of when, when you picture, if you had to draw a picture of inflammation, which is a little abstract? What, swelling. Swelling? Redness. Redness. Sometimes it's warm, heat. Well, that's actually the body's natural response to injury. So if we cut ourselves, if you're walking around the back of the trailer, oh, the trailer's not there, but the hitch is, and you whack your shin, which I've done many times, oh, goodness, does that hurt. And it really incites some inflammation. So you get the color, you get the redness, you get the heat, and some swelling. Well, that's just the body's natural way of healing itself. It's trying to get those nutrients in there. It's trying to send in all of the rescue teams to repair that injured tissue. Well, it can be good. For example, when you exercise a lot and you get sore afterwards, that's a form of inflammation. And that's a protective form. So our body does that to protect itself, to say, hey, guess what? You ran four miles yesterday, but that was four too many. Tomorrow, let's not do that. Well, you're not going to feel like running four miles if you're out of shape and your body has a lot of inflammation after that exercise. You're really not going to go out and do that. And that's our body's way of telling us that that's not going to work. Well, that's the okay kind of inflammation. The kind of inflammation that we're worried about is the chronic inflammation. And this goes the same for both people and horses, that that chronic underlying inflammation is really the root of so many disease cases. It's said that approximately 90% of human diseases are directly related to inflammation. And you think of any of the itises, pancreatitis, gastritis, anything with an itis means inflammation. But um, even on just a more general level, we think, well, inflammation, okay, I get the whack in your shin on the trailer hitch, but does it really happen everywhere? You bet it does. Your gastrointestinal tract can get inflamed and then it won't absorb properly or resorb properly. Your circulatory system can become inflamed, and then a whole slew of cardiovascular issues come with it. And you can have lots of different types of inflammation, from skin and allergy problems to um, even mental fatigue problems related to inflammation. In horses, some of the issues we think of are arthritis, laminitis, cellular aging, all related to chronic disease and inflammation. And what were the two things we were talking about? Omega-3s and omega-6s. And which one's related to inflammation? Six. Omega-6s, that's right. So what do those omega-6s do? Well, in our body, they're called a substrate, which is basically a building block 
So if you want to do anything with your body, you need to put these building blocks together so it can perform. So the substrate, when it's an omega-6 instead of an omega-3, the cyclooxygenase enzymes utilize those omega-6s to do all sorts of fun things, including pain, fever, inflammation, all the good stuff. That is what they use those building blocks for. On the flip side, the good guys, the omega-3s, have the exact opposite effect. So when those cyclooxygenase enzymes take in omega-3s, they have anti-clotting factors. They actually relieve inflammation. And so they do the exact opposite, which is nice. So you kind of have that yin and yang. You get too much of one, you want to raise the other. The problem with inflammation, specifically chronic inflammation, is that our body is so amazingly designed, just like our horse's bodies, that we can go a little bit one way. We can get a little bit out of whack, and it knows what to do. It'll bring us back on track. And that's what we call homeostasis. You get too far this way, your body naturally puts into place these mechanisms to bring you back to center. Oh, you get a little too far this way, it's gonna start moving you back to the center line. That's what we do naturally. The problem is when either you start to get too far out and instead of going back to center, you get further out a little bit more and then it's going back to center, you go even further out and then instead of coming back to center when your body actually does its job, only end up here, not quite where you need to be. Or if you don't have enough of the good guys, so all you keep feeding yourself or your horse are the bad guys, then your body is never going to have anything to counteract that movement away from the midline. And so that's what we see here with this graph, is that little things during the day, even just like intense exercise, well, you know, we get a little bit, oh, inflammation, we ran those four miles. Well, we're not gonna run four miles tomorrow. We're gonna drink lots of water. We're gonna get some good omegas. Oh, we're back here. Well, then, got some rancid feed. Not an uncommon problem. Oh, but we're all right, because we're supplementing. We're getting some good omegas back. Endotoxemia. Anything that sets you a little bit away from the norm, your body can bring you back. The problem is, is when we do it and then we don't counteract. Again, and that's where we cross what we call that disease threshold. So again, that's where I come a little bit too far from midline that when I go back, it's never going to be back where it was. And it's going to start to grow and go higher, and that's when we'll reach a disease state. So these little changes that we think, oh, do I really need to eat flax? Do I really need to give my horse a good source of, of hay and grass? Is it really going to make that big of a deal? Well, not today, not tomorrow, maybe not even a month from now. But over years, same as for us, it will build up in our body, and that is exactly the building blocks that take us in the wrong direction. Let's look at some food sources and what their content is of omegas. So fresh grass, it actually has a pretty good dose of omega-3s. Soybean oil, getting a little high there on the omega-6s. Well, commercial feeds, a little higher. Oats, they're a little bit higher. And those are just not natural forms of food. That's why they do have a higher omega-6 content. That's not necessarily part of our regular diet. So there was a study done at Colorado State, and it compared the omega-3 and omega-6 levels of just random commercial feeds. And on average, commercial feeds were much, much, much higher in omega-6 fatty acids. They're processed, they're high in corn, high in oats, high in barley, not high in grass, not high in flax. And so we get that imbalance. One thing that I really think needs to be pointed out specifically is corn. I don't know how many of you remember, gosh, back in the 80s and early 90s, I was fitting halter horses and just pour the corn oil <laughs> on, you know, and they get all slicked out and pretty on the outside. Well, if you feed them a bunch of oil, it's, it's gonna come out in their hair. But it might not be doing the greatest things for the inside of your horse. Let's look at corn. Corn is 54 omega-6s to one omega-3. That's definitely not good for our horse, but you know what, that's not good for us either. Really not good. Very much in the wrong direction. So um, again, looking at that ratio, 55 to one. It's just, it's, it's kind of scary. It seems obvious, but 
it's in everything. For people, not so much for horses, it's, it's kind of like um, high fructose corn syrup. It's one of those things where you don't realize it's in everything. And so being a well-educated client, being a well-educated horse owner is really the difference in looking for those ingredients, whether it's for your horse or for your dog or for yourself. So obviously the goal is feeding a natural diet. As much as possible, we really want to get back to the natural diet that a horse has because that all the research shows that high omega-3s is really the key. Um, so we're going to look at how does our feed that we're feeding today, again, if you can't have your horse on fresh green pasture all the time, which would be wonderful, um, how do we need to kind of make up for some of those inadequacies in feed sources? So for example, um, we did a study, um, actually we didn't, this is another Colorado State University study, um, that looks at the level of omega-3s in fresh cut alfalfa, level of vitamin E in fresh cut alfalfa, and then 10 weeks after it's been cut. And I don't know how fresh your hay is out here, but I know that the hay I feed, it's, it's right around there, if not longer. It's hard to get really fresh cutting. Um, so when we look at the omega-3s in alfalfa, you can see how much they drop significantly 10 weeks after cutting. Well, that's because horses, just like people, were meant to eat fresh foods. We're not meant to eat things that are preserved and stored and, and because they lose their nutritional value. So fresh cut is much, much, much better. Obviously grass is the best, fresh cut is, is better, but, but 10 weeks out, you're definitely going to need to add some extra omega-3s to your horse's diet because the diet that they're generally on is just not going to be quite adequate in omega-3s. Again, same with vitamin E. We see that there's an 86% drop in the level of vitamin E <coughs> after the cutting. So these really potent nutrients that the hay did once have degenerate. So again, let's go back to that evil word of inflammation. So on a cellular level, what specifically makes inflammation so bad? Well, there's actually markers of inflammation that we can tell and are directly related to disease states. So things that you might not see on the outside, you, can't, you can see the bump that the trailer hitch left, but you can't see necessarily the inflammation that's going on inside your gastrointestinal tract. You might feel it, but it's pretty hard to visualize. And so a great way of measuring it are through these inflammatory markers. So tumor necrosis factor alpha is one of the big inflammatory markers for people and for horses. And so when you look at supplementing with something that's high in omegas versus hay and grain, there's a significant difference in the level of inflammatory markers. You can see that with the TNF level, with hay and grain that's high in those omega-6s, the inflammation is much higher. Same with the interleukin genes. Much higher when you add a high omega-6 diet. Free radicals. So that's another thing we want to discuss. Go back to that cellular membrane. We were talking about that little blue guy that was an antioxidant. Well, the evil nemesis of the antioxidant is the free radical. Free radical is a charged molecule that's looking to be stabilized. So it needs an electron and it wants a donor. And it's ready to bind with just about anybody. And in that process, it does not bind with, with things that have a positive effect in our body. So what it does is look for antioxidants. That's why we ingest antioxidants. Our body produces um, internal antioxidants because this is a natural course throughout the day. That workout, that four mile run, that's gonna produce free radicals. And so it takes one antioxidant to neutralize every single free radical. So we need to make sure that we're really supporting our health and our horse's health with antioxidant support. That's what it's doing on a cellular level, directly neutralizing those free radicals that form every day. Rancidity, so I mentioned that before, feeding rancid feeds, that's a great way to increase inflammation. Well, how do you know if a feed's rancid? What causes a feed to go rancid? No. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. I'm so glad you said that. Eat it. 
they will tell you. Your horse will tell you when you have a rancid feed. But you wouldn't believe how many people I know still try to feed rancid feeds. And it's, you know, maybe you just don't notice. Maybe somebody else is feeding your horse and they don't know the difference. But there's certain elements that need to be taken into consideration. Whenever you're supplementing or using a feed, you want to make sure that you protect it as much as possible from three things. Heat, oxygen, and ultraviolet light. All three of those elements have a direct damaging effect on anything that's biologically active. So if you have a vitamin, a protein, an omega-3, those are these arch enemies for those guys. So basically what it is, is if you have a, a puzzle piece that fits into your puzzle perfectly, that's basically what a protein is. Its shape is so important because it won't fit if its shape changes. You expose it to heat, to oxygen, or to light, and that's what we call denaturing it. So those little bonds that hold it in this perfect structure, they break, they dissolve, and then it just relaxes. Oh, I don't have to be in that special shape anymore. But the problem is, it's also no longer going to fit in the puzzle. And so that's a big problem. Not only does it cause obvious things, like it's going to smell bad, your horse won't eat it, but it does a lot of bad things on the inside, too, if we go ahead and eat them. For people, that's what we call the peroxide value, is your level of rancidity. And we measure that for human consumption. So it has to be less than 10 <coughs> milliequivalents per kilogram. And that's what's acceptable for food for people. Well, unfortunately, the peroxide value in most common equine feeds is off the charts. On average, those are all just samples. There's a couple that are, are lower, nowhere near 10. But on average, they go all the way up to almost 400. It's amazing that that's even allowed to be sold. But the regulations for equine and canine animal supplementation are just different. You don't have the FDA stepping in and saying, you can't feed this, this is dangerous. So really being... Um, well-informed and looking at a company that tests for that in a feed is really key. So you want to make sure that you're always feeding a low peroxide level, low rancidity, checking your oils, checking um, anything that has vitamins, proteins, omega-3s, anything that's vol vi uh, volatile to make sure that it's stabilized, that you have some added antioxidants to make sure it's not going to go rancid on you or that it has an exp expiration date for rancidity and you, you follow that because feeding a rancid feed is very dangerous for you and your horse. So again, looking at the modern diet, high in grains and concentrates, prone to rancid feeds. So we're exposed to a lot of oxidative stress, rancidity, all goes back to inflammation. So our body does have some natural defense systems. So we make antioxidants ourselves, but we also naturally propone, uh, um, we naturally produce free radicals. So again, exercise, stress. A lot of things that we experience throughout the day are going to produce those free radicals. And so our natural instinct is to combat those. But how many of us do things that are a little bit over and beyond the normal stress level? Do you have a performance horse? Are you a performance person? Um, do you have a high stress job? Do you push yourself to the limit every day when you go and work out? Or do you feel like your job pushes you to the limit so you don't even feel like working out when you get home? Our horses feel the same way about different activities that they do. And that's, again, taking you back to that graph where you get further and further and further away from the norm. And that's where we really need to go back and supplement with omega-3s. So again, these are just some natural things that our body does to help defend itself against free radical damage. We produce superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase. So those are some big words of crazy things that work inside our bodies. But as you'll see, there's some nutrients that we can take to help support the production of those inside our body. So again, selenium, iron, copper, zinc, those are all things that we need to supplement with in order to have our body combat free radical damage. This is just looking again at 
damaged protein content in feeds, very high to see um, products that are high in protein and fat, volatile products have a higher peroxide level, just kind of like we talked about. Those are, those are products that can be damaged easily. Um, so again, back to our goal, natural diet, you're going to alleviate inflammation. You're going to be reducing the itises. Um, performance, less heretical damage, less prone to metabolic syndrome, which we see that in horses, people, children. Um, it's pretty rampant, and it all goes back to our basic cellular health. What do we look like on the cellular level? So just to give you a little bit of a um, practical application for how does this change your horse's life, um, before I finish up here and then we'll, we'll take some questions. Um, to give you an example, this was another Colorado State study. Um, we do a lot of work with University of Davis and then Colorado State. And so they've done some really great research on, on supplementation. And specifically, they did a study on subfertile mares. And so these were some older mares that were, were still looking to have babies. So their average age was 20. Um, and prior to the study, their pregnancy rate was barely over 20%. So that transfer rate is not very good. And we see this problem in human beings a lot too far as the ability to get pregnant, and that's a direct reflection on the amount of inflammation in your body. Are your hormones in balance? Are your mare's hormones in balance? They all go back to the inflammatory sources. Well, this study showed that after being switched to a diet that's high in omega-3s specifically, and they chose to use platinum because it's high in omega-3s, the study showed that the pregnancy rates in the recipient mares went up to 51%, and that's only after eight to 16 weeks of supplementation, no other change was made. So that's a 129% increase in fertility. And so if it can have that dramatic of effect on the reproductive system, think of all the minor changes it's making to your cardiovascular system, to your digestive tract, they're gonna help you on a daily basis. One more quick example. Um, so there is a common misconception that feeding higher amounts of grain and concentrates, corn oil, is the best way to add weight. I see a lot of this in my human practice with guys who are trying to gain weight and they are just eating anything and everything they can get their hands on because they want to bulk up. And we do this to our horses a lot as well. Well, the problem is, is it doesn't have the desired effect. That doesn't make sense. I'm eating everything I can. Why is this not helping? Why am I not gaining all the weight I want? So this study showed switching out proper nutrition in place of feeds of the same caloric value, but doing omega-3 nutrition, healthy proteins, healthy fats, you can get the same desired result. So in this study, adult horses were fed oat and alfalfa hay until they reached a constant weight, then supplemented with two ounces twice daily for 11 weeks, and that was platinum, high in omegas, healthy proteins. Basically, the total alfalfa hay volume was reduced, and so what they did is they accounted for that caloric difference so that they were getting the same amount of calories. And these horses, 87.5%, gained a significant amount of weight without a significant increase in their energy. And when we talk about nutrition, energy is is carbs, those are kind of the unhealthy calories that you don't want. And you think, well gosh, I need to put weight on this horse. This horse is already bouncing off the walls. They don't need any more energy. What am I gonna do with them? Problem is, believe it or not, the reason they're not taking in that nutrition is because of inflammation. Amazing, you address the inflammation and anti-inflammatory nutrition improves digestion efficiency. So if you think about it, your digestive tract is, is this big sieve, basically. It has holes in it so we can absorb that nutrition that we digest and we can take it into our bloodstream and we can use it as building blocks to make all these wonderful things and support our body. The problem is if it's inflamed, instead of the slits that absorb the nutrition being like this, they're gonna be inflamed and they're not gonna allow those nutrients to permeate into your bloodstream. They're gonna get stuck in your digestive tract. 
they're never going to be able to be absorbed and they're just going to pass right through you. So you could be taking all of the inflammatory fats and all of the great horrible calories you want and you might gain inflammation, but you're not going to gain muscle. You're not going to gain healthy weight and you're sure as heck not going to reduce inflammation. By switching to that anti-inflammatory food, like an omega-3, you reduce the inflammation and all of a sudden you can absorb nutrition again. And so we see that in a lot of, of horses that are, um, say like a rescue horse that has a lot of parasitic damage, a lot of intestinal inflammation. And the first thing that most people say is, wow, their top line improves dramatically because you take them off an inflammatory diet and you put them on an anti-inflammatory diet and then they actually absorb the nutrition you're feeding them. So it's a great way to switch a horse that doesn't need the extra energy or maybe you just want to, to improve their top line over to a healthy way of adding muscle, muscle tone and supporting whole body health. So again, going back to the natural diet, filling those nutritional <laughs> gaps, but mainly omega-3s and reduction of inflammation. Um, I feel like nutrition is, it, it can be so complicated and giving you tons of inflammation like I just did can be really overwhelming, but hopefully the take home from this is omega-3s reduce inflammation. So. Anybody have any questions? I, I didn't diverge too much from the standard nutrition just because there's so many routes that we can take, but I'm happy to answer questions or discuss specific issues. I use the uh, Platinum CJ for my horse. It's about 40 and the vet recommended it. Wonderful. Um, he's got really bad arthritis. And, like Within a week of starting it, he dramatically improved. Awesome. Um, I'm wondering, the Platinum, is it all supplements? Kind of like the CJ or the Good, yeah, so good question. So Platinum Performance, we, we are a supplement company. We don't make a feed. Um, again, our philosophy is more on the natural diet, but sometimes a feed source is necessary. And so search, searching out that healthy feed source, if, that, if that's a requirement for your animal, is really key. And so looking for those feeds that are going to ha have low levels of rancidity. Um, Specifically though, comparing like the CJ to the regular Platinum, it's an identical product, except the CJ adds a therapeutic dose of joint specific nutrition. So, but it's all supplements. Platinum and CJ are our foundation formulas, and then we have a line of support products that are designed to be added to either of those formulas. And ultimately, you would add the Platinum then to your hay, or if, if you have to feed the grain, Exactly, exactly. So that's the key is just um, the way that um, forage is today, it unfortunately doesn't have the high levels of omega-3s and vitamin E that our horses need as if they were on a free range grazing diet. And so most of the time supplementation to get those higher levels of omegas and vitamin E um, are necessary. And so supplementing with platinum is one example. You can add that direct to hay. Um, I actually dump it just in my horse's bucket and he'll lick it out of the bucket. But you're welcome to feed it with another product. It's, um, it can be fed by itself or mixed in with uh, the proper feed regimen. Is it always in the powder form or Good question. I'm so glad that you asked that. Um, so remember that slide that I had that talked about rancidity and there were three things that are the arch nemesis of natural products that you don't want to go rancid. And those three things are heat, light, and oxygen. So unfortunately, the pelleting process is a high heat process and nutrients are exposed to that heat and oxygen for a prolonged period of time. And we've tried and we've searched and we've looked for processes that come close to a pellet without causing that damage and it's really, really difficult to find. So anything that's in a pelleted form, that's just a nice solid pellet, it's really handy, but it's been cooked. And so it's just like when you take a fresh stick of broccoli and you throw it in a steamer and you forget about it and you come back a little bit later and it's like this little soggy gray thing. Um, that's basically what happens to our nutrients. That's the denaturing of those proteins. And I was talking about that puzzle piece that has that specific shape. So you have your strong broccoli, and then once you cook it, it's like limp broccoli, and it's no longer the shape it needs to be. And so the pelleting process does that on a more micro level 
to those individual ingredients. And so that's why we stay away from any form of processing. So the products that we have, you'll see, sometimes they're a little funky, like our hoof supports this bright blue powder. And uh, the platinum is kind of looks like crushed up graham crackers. And that's because it's completely unprocessed. And so it has an oxygen tight lid. There's a little ring you'll see on the lid of platinum. Um, and you'll also notice that we have a really short shelf life compared to most supplements. And that's just because it is so important to maintain the stability and the viability of those nutrients. So keeping them short shelf life, limited exposure to oxygen and light is really gonna maintain them. And so, and we test them in house over prolonged periods of time to make sure that opening and closing the bucket every day, that it's still gonna stay healthy. And so um, any of the high quality supplements on the market, they're really gonna take those things into consideration. And so seeking that out is gonna be key to making sure that you have a product that's viable when you get it. That's tough with the e. it, <laughs> right. Well, and, and you know, I know that this is a hot area, and so that's something to be concerned about. You want it more than anything, if you keep it, I've noticed um, with any product that's in a bucket, kind of like platinum, if you keep it out of direct sunlight, if you have a cement floor to keep it on, that's sometimes helpful. The cement seems to stay a little bit cooler until it gets hot and then it stays hot. But, um, you know, keeping it as cool as possible. A lot of people in really warm areas will even store their platinum in their garage or in their house just to make sure that it doesn't get overexposure to heat. Here. Yeah, it's. Um, Have you found any particular um, food that you would give a horse like omeline or um, rice bran until it interfere with the mineral absorption? It's in the vitamin product? Good question. So as far as the absorption of platinum when feeding those minerals, um, you're thinking of like competitive inhibition, like too much of one thing inhibiting the absorption of another? Well, no, like say um, some horses have the um, sugar problem. Mm -hmm. So you put them on rice bran, but then when you put them on rice bran, that inhibits the absorption of the nutrients through the gut. So what do you do? Well, it is kind of a catch-22 in some cases. I would definitely recommend that for special conditions like that, that you really work with your veterinarian because as far as the quality and necessity of other feed sources, they're gonna know what's available in your area, what's gonna be the highest quality, and, and what's gonna be best for your horse if you wanna pair, pair it with platinum. Um, Interfering, I haven't found, we haven't specifically done a study to look at like rice bran compared to platinum um, as far as reducing the absorption rate, but um, most of our studies are done with a, a forage, you know, like, like alfalfa. So um, I can't say that we've done any studies just because we don't necessarily uh, advocate any specific feed like rice bran. That's more up to your veterinarian to tell you which, what is going to be best for your horse. Yeah, so. Yeah, well, something we might have to look into. It might be interesting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. My hair has um, sun toxicity every once in a while. Oh. I switched it from alfalfa cubes to straight alfalfa hay. Okay. And I had her on platinum performance for a while, and then she got really um, temperamental, hmm. and they felt that I should take her off it. Hmm. So I have it sitting at home wanting to put it back on it. Gotcha. But um, she hasn't had any trouble with the sun for a year. Mm -hmm. But it happened this time of year. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, she doesn't need the fly mask anymore. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, it just went crazy. Mm. And you still haven't started supplementing with platinum again? Not yet. Just taking the, sun, the mask off and she started getting a reaction. Goodness. This was a year ago. Hmm. This had nothing to do with the platinum. Hmm. Um, is that a form of inflammation? I mean, gosh, you know, um, I, I would say to me that that's a, an immune system inefficiency. As with a lot of allergic reactions, um, whether we see them overtly as a skin reaction or an internal allergy, um, you know, say like an inflamed bowel of, of sorts, um, or in this case, uh, a, a more outward allergic reaction, that's usually our immune system not working efficiently. We always think that it's completely overactive, but more so it's actually that our immune system just doesn't know when and what to react to. And a lot of that goes back to our thymus gland. And so that's that little gland. It's the same protein produced by thymic gland in all mammals. So our horses make the same thymic protein that we do, exact same molecular structure, identical. 
The thymic gland is important for immunity because it's basically the educational institution for your immune system. It directly pairs with white blood cells and educates them on what to react to, how strong to react to it, when to react to it. And so when we get these allergies or sensitivities, it's usually because we might be low on thymic protein, but more generally our immune system is just not as efficient. Um, we see it more in, say, um, older people, older horses. As we get older, we in general become less efficient. Um, in fact, the amount of thymic protein that we produce, same with animals, um, dram drops dramatically after adolescence. So even in our early 20s, our thymic protein production goes way down. And in horses, it's much sooner. And that's why we are more susceptible to certain uh, infections as we get older, uh, just because our immune system isn't quite as savvy as it used to be. So um, it's a tough case because kind of what you've described, I, I, it's hard to know. I would say that your, your veterinarian is definitely um, the best person to refer to and perhaps maybe skin and allergy or immune support would be beneficial in that case, but I would recommend talking with your veterinarian to see what he or she thinks is, is kind of the root cause and, and what the best course of action is. That's a tough one though, because um, it really depends on your horse's specific needs. But I'm glad to hear that it wasn't in direct relation to the platinum. Sometimes it just happens coincidentally. And, but well, she's 10, and she's only had one episode. <laughs> the last one I hmm. So most yeah. commonly, yeah. with the photosensitivity here, we'll see them uh, react because of a photosensitizing weed that uh -huh. is in the hay, oh. whatever's okay. there. Um, most commonly associated with alfalfa hay. Mm -hmm. So if it was a cube, you might have gotten a batch of cubes that had some wheat present, like mustard wheat. Mm -hmm. It interferes mm -hmm. with the phytoerythrins, which are processed through the liver, and it makes them very sensitive to the sun. So since it was the one episode, it may be that we had some hay related. And I've seen horses that, um, paint horses that were fine, got a new load of hay. And, you know, hay has weeds sometimes. I mean, that's just what happens live in Montana and have certified weed-free hay, it will happen. And uh, I've had those horses crawl out of the skin and not even be able to walk because they've sunburned so bad. Wow. So that can happen. And it may have been just an isolated incident that you might not have to deal with again. Excellent. That's what I had heard too. I wasn't sure why that mm -hmm. went from alfalfa cubes to regular alfalfa, mm -hmm. even though you can see what's in the you can hey, see what's in the hay. Right, right. Exactly. Excellent, which is exactly why you should talk to your veterinarian because your vet's going to know what's going on in your, your area. You know, if that's something it sounds like, I would imagine, especially in an area like this where, where you do have some pretty intense heat and sunlight and uh, perhaps it's common in other regions as well. Um, but that's why it's so important to consult your vet to know what feed or what specific condition is more prominent in your area. So, you know, at Platinum, we'll do everything we can to support you and support your horse and help your vet if your vet has questions. But, um, but really, your veterinarian is the, the key source for nutrition recommendations for your horse. Okay, so there's lots of joint supplements out there to help keep them healthy and whatnot. What about, what's good to keep tendons healthy and Ooh. ligaments? and because I watched a really cool video of a cadaver horse. They took the leg off and like mm -hmm. it all the way down. It's pretty crazy. But it was really cool because you don't realize how much they're stretching and putting strain on that. Right. And uh, I've been, you know, I've been through both tendons. I don't ever want them again. <laughs> um, but other than, you know, obviously warming up and booting up and doing all that stuff. But is there supplements that help strengthen those areas? Good question. So, um, yeah, we see in a lot of our performance horses, whether it's a developed problem due to direct stress, chronic repetitive stress on a tendon or a ligament, or if it is um, a problem that you're born with. Um, there are a lot of different things that you can do to address these kind of structural issues. And one common thread between bone, ligaments, and tendons, so connective tissue in general, is silicon. And so there's been a couple different studies done on silicon and its direct effect on connective tissue and improving the integrity of connective tissue. 
And, um, and I can get you a copy of it, but there's a really unique study that was done in UCLA that um, saw a huge improvement in the integrity of those structures with additional silicon supplementation. And so um, naturally, allowing the body to heal itself, regardless of what type of supplementation you do, it does go back to inflammation. So if you have an inflamed ligament or an inflamed joint, inflamed tendon, I think of it like a traffic jam in LA. I might have this really important package, like silicon. I want to get silicon to that ligament or tendon, or I want to get glucosamine to that joint. Well, it doesn't matter how important that nutrient I have is, if I can never get it there. And when you have a problem, like a bowed tendon, a strain, sprain, uh, or an arthritic joint, there's usually a large component of inflammation. And basically, that's like a huge traffic jam in that area. It's not letting anything out, and it's not letting anything in. And so we need to first and foremost address the inflammation in the area, get the circulation going, and then pick the right nutrient, like silicon, to supplement with to get that nutrient where it needs to go. And so for connective tissue, silicon is the primary thing that I've seen. Um, for cartilage, um, ASU, avocado, soy, unsaponifiable lipids, um, that's also a very anti-inflammatory molecule, but it's also the only molecule that's been researched and proven to not only prevent cartilage degeneration, but also repair viable cartilage. Um, so when you, what's important when you're dealing with a cartilaginous joint is that cartilage should be smooth, and so it should be able to, to, to work without having jagged ridges, because if we were just creating more cartilage willy-nilly, well, that's not going to solve the problem. It's going to be jagged. It's going to be like arthritis. We don't want that. So if you're improving cartilage and adding to cartilage in a joint, it has to be a very specific manner of laying down those cartilaginous cells. And so ASU is one of those only molecules that's been researched and shown to resurface the joint in a uniform manner. And it also has um, some great healing properties for ligaments and tendons. So I'd say silicon and ASU are probably the two, the two nutrients I'd recommend for soft tissue. So what products do you have that has that in it? Um, so for platinum, the CJ is the only product that has ASU. Um, there's actually only two companies in the world that are licensed to use ASU, and so we're very fortunate that we're one of them. Um, and so that's the, the CJ Complete Joint Formula, and that has a, a base maintenance dose of a product we have called Osteon, which is strictly zeolite, and that's the big word for bioavailable silicon. And so Osteon, specifically for bone, tendons, ligaments, um, and then the CJ formula, which is just an anti-inflammatory joint support formula. So that's our protocol for tendon and ligament. It's, um, it's pretty awesome as far as practical application. I kind of look at worst case scenario. We see a lot of stress fractures in racehorses um, or say futurity horses, reiners, horses or cutters that you start at a really young age um, and you're putting quite a bit of stress on their joints really early, very much prone to those stress fractures. And we've had complete barns that go into a supplementation regimen with osteon and dramatically reduce or eradicate their incidence of stress fractures. In fact, that's one of the things that Dr. Herthel started out with was osteon was one of his original products. We had platinum, osteon, and biosponge, which is an intestinal adsorbent. But um, those three products was what he started on, and, and where our company is located, just north of Santa Barbara in the San Inez Valley, was all race farms. Back in the 70s and 80s, that was pretty much all we were, just race barns. And so a lot of his original trials were switching an entire barn over to platinum and osteon to address all of these cases of stress fractures. And that's the reason that he came up with the formula, because Dr. Herthel was thinking, gosh, this is not what I wanted to do. This is not why I became a vet. I don't want to deal with stress fractures the rest of my life. He's a surgeon. He wants, you know, some, some uh, crazy things. He's done some amazing surgeries, but stress fractures were not his thing. And so he's like, there's got to be an easier way to address this problem. And that's why he did the research and came up with these formulas. And we've seen some dramatic changes in barns that are prone to that. And so working on the large scale um, is, is much more dramatic to see the results. But it's pretty, pretty awesome. Is it oxygen like a, 
cartilage builder or what is it? It's not a cartilage builder. It's specifically um, silicon is directly integrated into the structure of the tendon and ligament. And so it's, it's one, of, uh, one of the actual structural components. And so by providing your body with an abundance of it, it really solidifies, kind of like if you... Like a collagen? Like a adherent? It's not specifically a collagen. I mean, silicon is just a mineral. But it's, a, it's something that's directly incorporated. If you think of, um, for example, like a, a analogy I would use, I guess, is a sponge, how there's all these, these open pores and the sponge is going to be not as strong because it's got some holes in it. If you start to fill in those holes, which is what the silicon does, you're not going to be able to squish it as much, but it's going to be stronger. It's going to be more, more, um, have more integrity. And so that's what the silicon does is improves the integrity of the connective tissue. Mm. But it's, um, it's very, when you look at it, it's just a white powder. So it's directly zeolite, bioavailable silicon. So you could give the CJ to a young horse mm -hmm. that's going to be exactly. doing that. Exactly. You could do it prophylactically. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't keep them from building up their legs. No, no. A lot of younger horses, if you say have a mare that's really prone to throwing OCD babies, for example. We just had a, a trial done, um, Bob Loomis, big reigning horse trainer um, or uh, breeder. Um, he had a barn full of mares that just repeatedly would throw OCD babies. And so he did a trial and he put them on the mares. He put them on platinum and osteon. And so platinum and additional silicon. And he had 20 mares that he put it on, put on that same regimen. Complete 100% zero incidence of OCD in his next full crop. And it was awesome because I was out at the um, National Reigning Horse Derby in June, and um, I didn't even say anything to him. And I had a ton of people come up to me and say, okay, tell me about this product because Bob won't let me go. He's been talking about this thing and da da da, da. <laughs> And so it's really neat to hear somebody like Bob Loomis, who is this really well-known breeder and trainer, and you know, we don't... We don't pay any of these people. We don't pay you know, Mary Walker or Tough Cooper or our Grand Prix jumpers. Uh, they use the products because they work. And so anybody you see using Platinum, we have no paid athletes. It's all people who use the products because they believe in it. And so that's, um, it was neat to hear that result from Bob, that he had such a great incidence of eradication of a disease condition, um, which is to us just over and above. You know, we're looking at reducing inflammation, and it's actually t helping to deal with something like OCD. So, you have a new product about for allergies in horses. It was oh, fairly, new, I guess. The skin and allergy formula? Is it working really well? We've had some great results with that product. Um, again, kind of like we talked about with the thymic protein, we focus on making the immune system, giving the immune system the ability to work more efficiently. And then hopefully the, the goal is that you don't want to get rid of the immune response, just like inflammation. We don't want to get rid of the inflammatory response. We just want it to happen when it's supposed to and not too much, not too little. And so we're trying to support your horse's immune system, but also give you some symptomatic relief. Um, histamine can kind of be a problem when you're dealing with allergies, same for people. And so we put quercetin in the skin and allergy formula, and that's a natural way of controlling histamine release. Um, and then we also add a really potent dose of DHA. And anybody who knows what DHA is, it's a major omega-3 fatty acid. So reducing inflammation, supporting the immune system, and then giving you some symptomatic relief um, from histamine. Do you give it all year round or just? Good question. So um, a lot of allergies are seasonal. People see them kick up, say, in the springtime, kind of start to diminish towards the end of summer. <laughs> Some horses have it year round, case by case basis. So platinum alone, if it's a mild allergy, I found that sometimes platinum is all it takes. That inflammation goes back to that inflammation. You address the inflammation and the body can heal itself. It's pretty awesome. It sounds like magic, but it's just physiology. And um, so sometimes that's all you need for a more severe case. If a horse has hives, just has this recurrent seasonal allergy, um, you can add the skin and allergy formula to platinum. If the horse shows signs of improvement, seems like you're on the right track, 
you can slowly diminish it, maintain them on platinum. If it's a regular thing every year, it comes around the same time, sometimes people do like to give it prophylactically. It's like, oh gosh, it's May. Oh, yep, it's time for allergies. So in April, they'll start adding the skin and allergy back into their horse's regimen, carry them through allergy season, and then drop it off again. But if you feed that, you, have, you should feed the platinum. Right. So the skin allergy only has three ingredients, and so that's just designed to kind of be the extra boost. But a lot of times, the reason that our bodies are working inefficiently, it's not just one thing that we're out of. It's, it might not be just omega-3s. Our body might have a major issue with a nutrient imbalance. So we might need a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and, and it's hard to know what that magic bullet is because there really is no magic bullet. It's usually a, a healthy amount of a broad spectrum. Proteins, you wanna make sure that you're getting all the amino acids that your horse needs because those are the building blocks for everything from muscle to uh, our blood cells. Everything is made of protein. And so um, proteins, vitamins, macro and trace minerals, anything that you feel like might not be in a healthy level in your hay, that's where sometimes doing a hay analysis can come in handy, especially if there's a, an allergen to a specific area. If your horse is perfectly fine and then you moved and, well, nobody else has seasonal allergies, but maybe your horse could be allergic to a specific hay or a feed. So all things to be taken into consideration, but on average, um, I usually start with the platinum unless it's severe and then add skin and allergy if necessary. But the CJ already is, has the base platinum. Correct. Yep. So CJ is platinum plus the joint nutrition. Any other questions? Does CJ help with things in their arthritis and it can't, I mean, it, it really depends on the phase, you know, where your horse is at in the progression of their issue. Um, naturally, there's, there could be some structural problems that, you, that need to be dealt with, and platinum won't necessarily reverse any sort of structural issue. That's not what it's designed for, Injecting, but... Um, alcohol into the joint mm -hmm. to get it to fuse. Mm-hmm. But doing osteon, when we're looking for a joint fusion, I, I definitely have heard vets that like to support with osteon when you're looking for a joint fusion. That can support bone growth, healing from a fracture, addressing a case where you want it to fuse. Um, same for people, really looking at getting the right nutrient support um, following up with a fracture is really key because our bones are extremely pliable. They're, they're, um, and I mean that as in that they, they change greatly. Our body takes nutrients or minerals from our bones as needed and we'll put them in the bloodstream. So the bones are the first to suffer. And so they'll give it up whenever the body calls for it. So it's really important to make sure that we have that calcium and phosphorus and zeolite available so that it can be deposited in the bones to maintain a healthy bone structure. So it can be helpful in that case. <laughs> well, I know nutrition can be a little um, much to take in, and you guys have been awesome for being patient and, and listening to my omega-3 and inflammation talk. Um, if anybody else has any, oh, yes? I just have a quick question. Sure. Um, I know for like horses, what about the horses that are allergic to the skin allergies, all that kind of stuff, that would be right. absolutely Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, so obviously every animal is different. Dogs metabolize things a little bit different than horses. Um, but on average, um, the skin and allergy and one of the platinum formulas paired together uh, for dogs, we've had some awesome results. I actually have an Aussie Border Collie Cross myself who had a horrible case of dermatitis um, on his hindquarters. We're talking like sheets of flaky skin. and. He, it's driving him crazy, it was driving me crazy. Um, and so that was right when I first started working for Platinum. And uh, so I put him on Platinum K9 Plus, which is great for like a middle-aged dog, um, and the skin and allergy support. And it took about, I would say, six to eight weeks. At six weeks, 
his condition was cleared up, no redness, no flaky skin. But it took another couple weeks, I think, before he realized he didn't itch anymore. Um, you could kind of tell he would be like, hey, oh, uh, maybe not. And so um, with dogs, it's funny because things become so habitual with horses and people too. But um, for the most part, I would say um, sometimes patience with a skin and allergy issue. I've had people say that it works really fast, and that's awesome. But um, Sometimes, and it depends if your horse or your dog is being re-exposed constantly, if it's an environmental allergen, and every day you're taking in more of that allergen, your body is fighting an uphill battle, and so you have to be patient. Where say if you um, were in a hotel room and they had some chemical on the carpet and everybody is having allergy reactions and you get away from that, you're gonna get better much faster. So, um, but really effective for canine. Had lots of people say great things about it. And I think there's a couple really neat um, client success stories in our catalogs about skin and allergy because that is such a huge issue for small animals. But horses also. I will say on the human side, last time Dr. Arson was here um, to do a little promo for our clinic, I've been having quite a bit of hip pain um, to the point where I thought, wow, here's the beginning of the end that they all talk about, right? I can't get around anymore. So she was nice enough to send me some samples of their Orthocon Plus, and uh, it was getting to the point I had to lift my own legs to get out of bed, to put my boots on, I could cringe in pain, and it was 24 hours. The next day I jumped out of bed and went, wow, I jumped out of bed. <laughs> and then, you know, I didn't even think about it until, wow, I'm not wincing in pain. So it is, uh, their human side is very effective as well. I'm, I'm, I'm not an easy sell. <laughs> and they, they work well. So, I've seen it work for the horses. I don't know why I couldn't buy into that for my own self. It does uh, make quite a bit of difference. It's, it's really neat. In fact, that's how we started into our human product line is people were seeing what great effects it had on their horses and they think, well gosh, if platinum's good for my horse, it'd be good for me. And so they start, start eating the equine platinum. In fact, um, I think you probably saw during on the video uh, that I showed at the very beginning, there are a couple of clips of swimmers, and it was actually, I think there were two swimmers in that one, and Gary Hall Jr. and Nathan Adrian, and uh, gold medalist Olympic swimmers, amazing guys. Um, and Gary, he's just got such a great story. Um, nicest guy, he's about that tall and about built like that, and just built to be a swimmer. And when he was getting ready for his first Olympics, um, he was diagnosed with type one diabetes. and his doctor told him, there's no way, I'm sorry, but there's no way you're gonna be able to keep up with your training regimen. You know, there, you're gonna have to undergo some serious nutritional changes, your body's not gonna have what it needs, we just, it's not gonna work. And so um, his swimming coach at the time was actually dating a veterinarian, and this is in Florida, and so she had all this big race barn on platinum, and she said, well, you know what, we've actually had a couple metabolic cases that really did a turnaround on platinum, you know, you should see if your Gary guy might help him. And so lo and behold, he started taking platinum, really helped him to regulate his blood sugar. We also make the bars, as you can see, I left some samples over there so you guys can all grab some if you want. Um, but that would basically get him through his practices and helps to stabilize blood sugar for horses and for people. It's, it's amazing when you have, um, something that's in a, a low glycemic index range, which means, yes, you have some carbohydrate, but you also have high protein and high fiber. I always give the peanut butter and jelly sandwich analogy. Um, you know, if you're eating white bread, which is like really high on the glycemic index because it's basically just sugar, when our body breaks it down, we think, well, it's bread, it's not sugar. When you break it down in your body, it's just sugar um, compared to like wheat bread, which is high in fiber. So you have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on white bread, your blood sugar is going to go sky high. You have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on wheat bread, high in fiber, high in protein, minerals, nutrients. You pair it with a little bit of peanut butter, but you're okay because it offsets the effect of that little bit of carbohydrate, that little bit of, of sugar. And peanut butter has some redeeming values to it as well. So um, basically that's what platinum does, is we're pairing a lot of people will look at it and say, oh, my, my metabolic horse can't have that because I see there's molasses on the ingredients. Well, there is a little bit of molasses, and that's mainly just for palatability, and we put natural honey and molasses in it. Um, but it's so high in flax, healthy omega-3s, flax oil specifically, 
cold pressed flax oil, um, high in protein, and those by far offset the carbohydrate that are in the product. So what effect does it have on metabolic horses? It actually helps lower their blood sugar. Same with people. And so Gary went on to the Olympics. He competed in two Olympics after that, has won 12 Olympic medals, all as a type one diabetic, which was like unheard of. In fact, you, you may remember this, back when it happened, um, the, the press kind of got a hold of this fact that the Kentucky Derby winner was taking platinum that year. And the gold medalist US Olympic swimmer, Gary, or Gary Hall was wearing, taking platinum. And so there was actually a Sports Illustrated cover that had, uh, I think it's Pachusi, I can never say it, Pegasus, Pachusi Pegasus, and Gary Hall both taking, they said, you know, the same product, but one was made for people, so. Yeah. But uh, just designed a little differently. Same high quality nutrients, but we have just a little bit of a different protein, vitamin, mineral need than horses do, so.